Hello, my dear students. Welcome to the video. This video is going to be about uh, George Orwell's Animal Farm, and it is the first video out of the two videos that I'll be making on this book by George Orwell. I have divided this video into three parts, and in the first part of the video, I'll be talking about George Orwell as a writer. I'll be talking about the incidents of his life that shaped. Uh, him as a writer and that influenced his uh, writings in the second part of the video i'll be talking about the major themes of animal farm and in the third part of the video i'll be discussing the the genre of animal farm and i'll be giving you a brief introduction to the work animal farm so let's get started George Orwell is one of the greatest modern British writers that we study today. He was a fiction writer, he was a non-fiction writer, he worked for the BBC as a journalist and he was a champion for the cause of freedom champion for the cause of human equality he was against totalitarianism he was against tyranny he was against all the oppressive regimes that were shaking the world when he was alive and he had a special connection with india he was born in 1903 in motihari in bengal in india and he was uh, born to uh, british parents his father richard uh, blair uh, he was a civil servant with the British government. He was posted in India and his mother Ida, she was of French descent and though his parents were not really wealthy, but Richard's forefathers, Richard's grandfather, he had been a slave owner and he was really, really wealthy. But all that wealth had gone now. So they were not wealthy, but still they maintained that pretense of affluence. And this pretense of affluence was something that Orwell really did not, did not like. So he, uh, he disliked it so much that later on in his writings, he has talked about the, this atmosphere at his home as an atmosphere of impoverished snobbery. And one important thing that we need to know here is that George Orwell was his pseudonym. His original name was Eric Arthur Blair and George Orwell is the name that he acquired only after he was 30 years of age. So, uh, George Orwell's parents, they maintained this, this atmosphere of impoverished snob snobbery at home. And uh, when he was very young, in the year 1905 or 6, his mother Ida, she took him to England. And when he was 11 years old, he was sent to St. Cyprian's. Now, St. Cyprian's is a preparatory school and it prepares uh, the students to go to more fashionable schools. So he was there. And this is a since this is a, this was a fashionable school so all the students who were studying there they were all they, they all belonged to rich families and Orwell's family was not that rich so that gap was always there and he was conspicuous in that school because of his poverty and because of his intellect so this experience he he had to he uh, talked about these experiences uh, in his work such such were the joys and then uh, he was uh, sent to Eton. I mean, in 1917, he was sent to Eton. And he was there at Eton from 1917 to 1921. Now, Orwell's parents were hoping that he would opt for a university education. But instead of going for a university degree, Orwell, he uh, opted for British civil services. And he was sent to Burma as a civil servant, as a police officer. Now, Orwell, initially, he tried to be an oppressor in Burma. He tried to play that role of an oppressor in Bur Burma. But his conscience would not allow it. He tried to befriend the Burmese people, but he could not since they would not trust him. So it was a very bitter experience for him. It was a very uh, uh, unpleasant experience that he had in Burma. And he stayed in Burma from 1922 to 1927. And he has talked about all these experiences in his book, The uh, Burmese Days, which came out in 1934. Now, when he came back to England in 1927, uh, he was confused. He did not want to go back. And he always he had always wanted to be a writer. So finally, he decided that he would not go back. And he uh, left his job and he uh, he stayed in London, but he went to East London and he stayed there as a tramp, as a poor man, and he gained this experience. So he would, uh, you know, dress as a tramp. He would live in the uh, in the poorest uh, localities of London, and he would get that experience of poverty. And for a for a year and a half, he went to Paris also, and he lived in utter abject poverty poverty in Paris and he uh, I mean he was preparing himself to be a writer all these years so uh, from uh, between uh, 1920 to 1930 
1928 to 1932 he was having these experiences and finally he came out with his first book which was called down and out in paris in london which came out in 1933 and this book was uh, a bit scandalous he was talking about all this this poverty and all the experiences that he had in london and paris uh, which are supposed to be the fashionable centers fashionable cities of europe so he changed his name in 1933 he changed his name he used the pseudonym of george orwell instead of his original name eric arthur blair and he uh, i mean this book uh, it it received a fairly good reception but it was not an instant hit as such so he uh, he uh, he was having this experience and he was writing more and more books he was living his dream of becoming a writer so in 1935 came his book a clergyman's daughter again based on his own experiences as a school teacher and in 1936 came his book keep the uh, aspidistra flying now this book keep the aspidistra flying it talks about the dehumanizing effect of so society on human beings it, it and this book also it was i mean all his books they were selling 3000 4000 copies so they were not uh, uh, they were not uh, utter disasters but they were not utterly popular books they were not very popular books so he had uh, a readership there were people who uh, recognized the undercurrents of his writings and they loved reading him but he was not a very popular writer as such at that time now victor golanks was uh, um, the man who noticed this book keep the aspidistra flying and he gave him an, him an offer uh, and he said that he would give him 500 pounds if he would write a book for him so uh, orwell went to the poorer side of north london and he stayed there for two months and then he came out with uh, this book the road to vegan peer it came out in 1936 and this was the book where he declared himself to be a socialist so he uh, i mean he uh, made this these socialist leanings of uh, his intellect very clear to his readers now uh, <clears throat> i mean he was living his dream it was uh, a normal life that he was leading but this this life it was uh, you know it, his life had to change forever and there was this spanish civil war that broke out in 1931 and orwell went to spain to report for the war i mean he went as a journalist to spain but he could not keep himself away from the scene i mean there was the spanish civil war happening and there were communists on one, on the one side there were uh, republicans on the one side and there were many types of anarchists who were involved in this civil war so uh, he could not keep himself aloof and he uh, said that he would also fight in the war so he participated in this war and while the war had almost ended he had uh, he was shot by a sniper and he was shot in the throat by by that sniper and it was it seemed as if he he his life would could not be would not be saved but finally his life was saved and uh, i mean we we get to we got to read two of the the most famous works that orwell wrote afterwards so he came back to uh, england in 1938 and his homage to catalonia the book that he wrote, wrote on his experiences in spain it is considered to be one of the best books on war reporting homage to catalonia so <clears throat> and after that i mean he uh, his his throat was injured and his vocal cords were injured and his wife also was not keeping well his wife eileen she had developed cancer so she was also not keeping well and uh, he was i mean he he uh, his experience in spain it had given him a lifelong hatred for communism and then he uh, was to write these two books called the animal farm and 1984 afterwards so in 1945 he wrote uh, i mean he had written animal farm before that before 1945 but it could not be published in england because ussr was an ally of british government and no publisher wanted to uh, you know invite the i mean no publisher wanted to offend the government as such so he, he could not find any publisher for this book which was which was about an animal farm which was about pigs and horses and cows and pigeons so he found an american publisher and this book was published in 1945 but up till now all his books were selling 3000 to 4000 copies and animal farm sold 
more than 250000 copies in one year so orville was financially stable now he had established himself as a writer by now but his health was failing and with his throat injury he had uh, developed tuberculosis also and his health was failing and uh, he wanted to write another book in the meantime his wife elin died so she he had uh, he had an adopted son called richard and he went to scotland with his son and he started working on his final book which was to be called 1984 so he prepared the first draft in 1948 and he swapped the last two digits of those years so 1948 became 1984 he uh, he finished the first draft in 1948 the second draft in 1949 his health was constantly failing and he could not get anyone to type his book but still he was at it till the very end and he could see this book get published and 1984 as we know this book now this book is a is a very loud cry against totalitarian regimes is a loud cry against all the oppressive regimes of the world and it is a masterpiece as we know it so these are all the major works that george orwell wrote and uh, all his life he was a socialist all his life he was a champion for the cause of freedom for the cause of equality and he wrote whatever he experienced in his life now coming to the second part of the video i'll be talking about the major themes of animal farm now the major themes of animal farm are totalitarianism revolution and corruption class warfare language and power role of the populace religion and tyranny and the soviet union these are the major themes that i think there are there in the book but when we as we read the book we find there are many other things that the book talks about so let's discuss these these themes one by one so the first theme that strikes us is totalitarianism this novella is against totalitarianism it it is against all the oppressive regimes and it talks about the ill effects of totalitarianism now totalitarianism or dictatorship is that kind of a governing system where the state takes all the decisions and the uh, the voice of the people is unheard of so it uh, it talks about a farm where mr jones is uh, like the first uh, despot or like the first dictator that we have and then the the animals rebel against the establishment and they have their own republic but gradually that republic turns into a dictatorship and napoleon becomes a totalitarian ruler so it 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 gives voice to what happens in that farm and what are the methods that these totalitarian rulers use to maintain their power to maintain their control and authority the second important theme is revolution and corruption all the animals in the farm on the farm they rebel against mr jones who is their human oppressor and they try, they establish uh, their own rule they establish at the animal republic there but gradually as with the passage of time that revolution the ideals of the revolution they, they are forgotten and there is corruption rampant all over the farm and that corruption is maintained by the rulers only by the people who say themselves to be the leaders of the people the, the leaders of the normal animals uh, the the common man as we say so they uh, these leaders they they uh, support corruption and ultimately because of corruption all the ideas of the revolution they go downhill and uh, i mean this this whole the, the farm it goes a full circle it goes around a full circle and uh i mean they begin with the idea of a better world of of uh, the the dream of equality and ultimately they end up being exactly at the same place where they started because of corruption and one of the most important themes of animal farm is class warfare all the animals they are equal as it says but some animals are more equal so how those classes are maintained i mean the, the animals they rebel against mr jones because they want a world where they would be equal they want a world where they would have equal rights but gradually that ideal of equality is not achieved initially it seems as if they have achieved this ideal but in reality as time goes by this uh, the whole society it gets divided into classes so we have the the ruling class napoleon and 
his children then we have the elite class we can say uh, so uh, squealer and other pigs they they might be said to be belonging to the elite class and the third one is the common people the common masses so all the other animals they belong to the this 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 uh, uh, common masses uh, class the class of common people so the whole society gets divided into this class and how that class warfare goes on and how the ruling classes or the aristocratic rich classes they oppress the poor they and they find new ways and means of oppressing the poor so this novella is all about that now one of the most important and most interesting themes of this novella is language as power orwell deals with this theme with greater detail and with greater sophistication in his book 1984 but in this novella also he talks about the power of language and how language helps the state or the despots maintain their power so we have napoleon as the oppressor in this novella and napoleon has squealer with him squealer is the propagandist of napoleon whatever decisions napoleon takes they might not be uh, for public welfare they might be for his own welfare but squealer has the duty of convincing all the other farm animals about the uh, the correctness of the decisions of napoleon so this is where the role of language comes into play squealer uses the his ingenuity of language he uh, you know frames his sentences in such a way uh, that he would convince the animals and at the same time they have this uh, i mean the, the seven commandments that are very important we'll be talking about them in greater detail later on but the seven commandments how they are changed into something else and how still animals they are made to believe uh, that the original commandments were the ones who uh, the changed ones are actually the original commandments so this is how language is used as a tool to maintain the power so when they are not able to convince the animals about uh, the they are not able to uh, make all the animals understand the ideals of animalism this one shot phrase to two legs uh, bad four legs good two legs bad four legs good two legs bad that the sheep keep on bleating this this short phrase it has uh, a very powerful effect on all the animals and beast of england the song the beast of england beasts of england it has uh, again a very different effect on the animals so how language is used by the state machinery to control its people to control its subjects and how it can uh, it can actually mold the way of thinking of the common masses is very interesting to see here in this novella another very important theme is role of the populist the role of the common masses now we have been talking about that uh, about the fact that this uh, novella is about totalitarian regimes it is about oppressive regimes and it talks about uh, the ill effects of tyranny it talks about uh, the uh, corruption of the ideals of communism it talks about all these things but at the same time the sustenance of these despotic regime the sustenance of these uh, dictatorial regimes it depends on the popular support and it depends i mean it is perpetuated it is maintained because of the various differing attitudes of the populace uh, so we have people like molly here who would do everything to maintain their own comfort so they do not think about the general good they do not think about the good of the animals in general she thinks about only herself and she she is happy doing whatever is uh, asked of her so we have people like molly then we have this horse boxer and he is you know he he is not ready to think any about anything he is not ready to exercise his brain he does not think critically and he believes in his leader blindly he is a blind follower of his leader so people like boxer or people like molly even people like benjamin benjamin is the donkey and though he understands everything he is not ready to take any action he is not ready to convince others about the futility of the decisions of napoleon or the the vicious character of the decisions of napoleon so there are these different different the people with different attitudes and how they play an important role uh, which is why these dictators are able to maintain their dictatorial rules and then the russian revolution 
this is the most important thing to know about this novella this whole novella is about is based on the russian revolution so it is an allegory of the russian revolution it talks about the russian revolution of 1917 and the establishment of the regime of stalin the the dictatorial regime of stalin in russia and how stalin uh, during his regime he uh, from uh, being a communist leader i mean people revolted against king nicholas the second because they wanted uh, democracy or because they wanted more power in their hands but uh, stalin comes to power and he again establishes a dictatorial rule so it talks about the russian revolution the aftermath of russian revolution and how the regime of stalin it betrayed people's trust it be, it, it it shattered people's dreams of a more equal society of a society where they would have more opportunities more rights and they would have equality so it talks about all that now coming to Uh, the animal farm the, i mean the book animal farm and talking about uh, giving you a general introduction about the book uh, let me tell you that this book was first published on august 17 1945 as i have already told you that this book was written somewhere around 1943 but uh, orwell could not find any publishers in britain for this small novella about animals and i mean everybody thought it was weird why would we like to talk about animals and an animal farm when the whole world was going through a world war so he could not find any publishers then and it was published by an american publisher on the condition that he would publish it only after the war had ended so we we got this book on august 17 in 1945 and then this book is an allegorical novella allegorical novella i mean this is a novella not a novel this is a smaller work than a novel and it is allegorical so it has a story alongside the main story and then this book as i have told you this book reflects events leading up to the russian revolution of 1917 and then the stalinist era it talks about the establishment of the regime of joseph stalin and how he oppressed his people and the original title of animal farm was animal farm a fairy story it is far from being a fairy story but this was the original so it is an ironical title and later on some publishers dropped this subtitle a fairy story so right now we address this book only as animal farm now talking about the genre of this book as i have already told you that this this book is a novella uh, it is a it is a short novel as we can say and it is a fable and it is an allegory so when we say it is a novella so it is a text which is uh, a fictional a narrative prose and usually it is longer than a short story but shorter than a novel so it is not a complete novel but it is longer than a short story so we call it novella so uh, i mean the length of a novella is around somewhere between 17000 to 40000 words and it derives the word novella it derives from the italian word novella which means something new so this novella is a fable now fable is a short story which uh, teaches us a moral lesson and it has animals as uh, chief characters so we have grown up listening to the story of a tortoise and a rabbit uh, so this novella is also a fable it talks about animals we do not I, i mean we do have human characters but very few human characters are there most of the important characters are animals and we do have a lesson at the end of the story so this is a fable and it is an allegory so uh, allegory is as you can see it is a symbolic narrative the simplest way to understand an allegory is that it is an extended metaphor so we have um, i mean we have some comparison we have some parallel in the story and that parallel is maintained throughout the work throughout the novella then it would become an allegory so an allegory is a story or a poem or a painting in which the characters and events are symbols of some other characters and events so allegories can be historical they can be moral they can be religious they can be political this particular book is a political allegory talking about the genre of the poem we can go no further without discussing the fact that animal farm is a satire so satire is that art piece satire is that form of writing which ridicules something which ridicules 
मे बी सम सोशल फॉली मे बी सम ह्यूमन फॉली इट रेडिक्यूज दैट फॉली इन ऑर्डर टू ड्रॉ अटेंशन ऑफ द रीडर्स टू वर्ड दैट फॉली सो दैट इट कैन बी करेक्टेड सो दैट इज अटायर एंड एनिमल फार्म इज अटायर आउट एंड आउट सटायर सटायर टू the core so it talks about despotic regimes it talks about the corruptions uh, corruption of the ideals of communism it talks about how power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely it talks about how religion plays an important role in maintaining i mean religion becomes a tool in the hands of politi- politicians political leaders uh, because they want to maintain their authority so it talks about so many these 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 follies these vices of human life of human society it draws attention towards these vices so that we can think about them and we can correct them so it is an out and out satire this is all for today's video i'll be talking more about animal farm more about uh, the characters of animal farm the story and other important aspects of the novel which will help you prepare for your exams for now this is all from me if you have any questions any queries you can write to me in the comment box or you can contact me directly thanks for watching